Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you very much for joining today. Uh, it's a working day and uh, it's a very nice crowd today. Thank you. Um, I'd like to seek your good wishes and your kind blessings so that we can continue with um, our overview of the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto. The 10th Canto is like uh, worshipping the lotus face of Sri Krishna. We begin with the first and second cantos at the lotus feet. And then gradually we go up, having darshan of the Lord's thighs and uh, his uh, waist and his chest and his arms. And now we are at um, his face. The tenth canto is regarded to be um, uh, very important for us to understand. Krishna book Prabhupada has written, which is a summary of the tenth canto. Um, so he wrote that before he finished the Srimad Bhagavatam because uh, Tenth Canto is so important, he encapsulated it into the Krishna book. But we are very fortunate we are able to also look at a little bit more detail of each chapter. So we've been looking at the Lord's Mathura pastimes over the last uh, few days, um, starting from chapter 41, and we saw how he uh, entered Mathura with Balaram and the, uh, his cowherd friends. They met with Sudama, the garland maker, who worshipped them, gave him garlands, so many things. The washerman wouldn't give anything, so Krishna gave him a thumping. <laughs> and uh, Kubja, uh, the hunchback, uh, he straightened her out because she gave him some really amazing service. Uh, the fine sense that she was making for the king, she gave to Krishna and Balaram. And then yesterday we saw how uh, Krishna defeated the uh, elephant and the elephant keepers. And today we continue with uh, uh, that theme. So <coughs> chapter 44. Vicharan Sopan Swashan. Tada Sacha Krayudam Akrato Yatas Tadeva Rupam Durava Pamapa. Translation Kams had always been disturbed by the thought that the Supreme Lord was to kill him. Therefore, when drinking, eating, moving about, sleeping, or simply breathing, the king had always seen the Lord before him, the disc weapon in his hand. Thus, Kants achieved the rare boon of attaining a form like the Lord's. This is the most extraordinary thing about the Lord. You can think about him positively or negatively. Kams wasn't thinking about him in devotion, not in the devotion, devotion that we talk about, loving devotion. He was thinking about him in a different way, as an enemy, but he couldn't get Krishna out of his head. <laughs> he was very fortunate. So, this is the thing with the Lord. He uh, is neutral because he's neutral. Whether one thinks of him positively or negatively, it doesn't matter. He's thinking of the Lord and he'll give you his uh, association. He'll purify you because of those thoughts, even if those thoughts are to kill the Lord. Of course, <laughs> we don't want to go down that road. Kamsi's path is not one for us. We want to actually associate with the Lord in loving devotional service. But we can see the, the uh, magnificence of the Lord, whether one is thinking about him uh, in a positive or negative way. It doesn't matter. He'll purify you anyway. So extraordinary, really, extraordinary. So this chapter is the, one of the main reasons why Krishna comes, uh, the external reason why he comes, the internal reason. The real reason why he comes is not to kill Kams. He comes for us, to get us out of this world. But the external reason, one of the external reasons he came was to kill Kams. So after 11 odd years on the planet, he did the job. This chapter tells how Krishna and Balaram killed the wrestlers, how Krishna killed Kams, consoled Kams' wives, and how the two lords, Krishna and Balaram, were reunited with their mother and father. 
So, Krishna and Balaram each fought with their respective opponents hand to hand. So this was Mustik and what was the other name? Chandur. Chandur. Yeah, that's right. Leg to leg, chest to chest. So these wrestlers were actually very fortunate. They could touch the Lord. Of course, he's not touching him in an intimate way, but they were still touching the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They were dragging, shout, shoving, crushing, throwing each other down. It was a phenomenal fight. The Lord was enjoying it. Forcefully lifting and carrying each other, pushing each other away and holding each other down. The fighters hurt even their own bodies in their great eagerness for victory. Of course, um, in the audience, there was a lot of criticism because these wrestlers were huge. They had huge muscles on them and it looked like a very uneven match. All the women present, considering the match an unfair fight between the strong, the two professional wrestlers and the weak, the two young immature boys <laughs> felt extreme anxiety due to compassion. So this is generally we see uh, ladies have this uh, wonderful quality of fairness and compassion. So they were manifested in that arena. They assembled in groups around the arena and spoke to one another about what a greatly irreligious act the king was committing. However, they appreciated the beauty of Krishna and Balaram's faces as they perspired in the fight. Just see the lotus face of Krishna as he darts around his foe. <coughs> that face covered with drops of perspiration brought on by a strenuous fight resembles a lotus covered with dew. So even though Krishna lay, um, must be covered with uh, sweat, they looked extraordinary. In fact, they looked even more beautiful. Hmm. This is the beauty of Krishna. He increases his beauty at every moment, no matter what he's doing. And they praise the gopis. What austerities must the gopis in Bandavan have performed with their eyes? They uh, always were drinking the nectar of Krishna's, Lord Krishna's form. And with their minds fully attached to Krishna and their throats, always choked with uh, tears, they constantly sing about him while milking the cows, uh, winnowing grain, churning butter, gathering cow dung for fuel, riding on swings, taking care of their crying babies, sprinkling the ground with water, cleaning their houses, and so on. So this was the glory of the gopis. They would continue with their household duties, whatever they were, but constantly in thought of Krishna. This is bhakti yoga. Um, this is a glory of bhakti yoga as well, that no matter what one situation is, one can still engage in bhakti yoga. One can be in the most difficult circumstance. Uh, like Gajendra, he was uh, in the uh, lake and he was being dragged down uh, by the crocodile. So he was in a really terrible condition, yet he offered prayers to the Supreme Lord. So whatever situation one is in, one should always, one shouldn't make an excuse. I can't think of God. No, you can think of the Lord at any time, any moment. And the example is the gopis. When the gopis hear Krishna playing his flute as he leaves Braj in the morning with his cows or returns with them at sunset, the young girls quickly come out of their homes, houses to see him. They must have performed many pious activities to be able to see him as he walks on the road, his smiling face mercifully glancing upon them. So generally when the, um, Krishna went to the forest, the gopis would be very uh, glum because he was not gonna be within their vision for the whole day. But when he was coming back, they would be ecstatic. They would be waiting for him. And Krishna would also give them sidelong glances, showing them that I can see you. <laughs> As the women spoke, Krishna and Balaram's parents, that's Devaki and Vasudev. So these are the parents which uh, 
to whom they to whom they appeared um, in Mathura. Of course, uh, Balaram was transferred from the room of Devaki to the room of Rohini. So he appeared actually in, in, in Gokul. So Devaki and Vasudev, who were in prison at that time, became overwhelmed with sorrow when they heard the women's fearful statements. Then Lord Krishna made up his mind to kill his opponents. Lord Balaram and Mushtik, expertly displaying numerous wrestling techniques, battled each other in the same way that Lord Krishna and his opponent did. Krishna grabbed Charnur by the arms, swung him around several times and hurled him into the, onto the ground with great force. His clothes, hair, and garland scattering, the wrestler fell down dead. Similarly, Mushtik received a violent blow from the Lord's mighty Lord's palm. The demon trembled all over in great pain, vomited blood, and then fell lifeless onto the ground. Oops, so that, wrong button. Krishna and his friends, they celebrate, confronted next by the wrestler Kuta, Lord Balaram, the best of fighters, playfully and non-chantingly, killed him with his left fist. Then Krishna kicked in Sala's head and tore Toshala in half, and both wrestlers fell down dead. The remaining wrestlers all fled for their lives. <laughs> Krishna and Balaram then called their young cowherd boyfriends to join them. And in their company, the lords danced about and sported, their ankles bells resounding and a musical instrument play, playing, as, uh, sorry, as musical instruments played. The exalted Brahmins and great saints exclaimed, excellent, excellent, Shaba, Shaba. Everyone was happy at the victory except Kams. He ordered the arrest of Nanda as well as the death of Vasudev and Ugrasen. Now, Vasudev Ugrasen, they were both in prison. <clears throat> Krishna then jumped up onto the royal dais, and although Kams instantly rose from his seat and took up his sword and shield, Krishna grabbed him by the hair and threw him down onto the wrestling mat and struck him repeatedly until he died. He then dragged him <clears throat> along the ground because Kams had always been disturbed by the thought that the Supreme Lord was to kill him. Therefore, and this is the worst that we were reading, when drinking, eating, moving about, sleeping, or simply breathing, the king had always seen the Lord before him with the disc weapon in his hand. Thus Kams achieved the rare boon of attaining a form like the Lord's. Kams' eight young brothers, led by Kanka, then attacked the Lord in a rage seeking to revenge their brother's death, but Balaram slew them with his club. Brahma, Shiva, and other demigods rained down flowers upon Krishna with pleasure and chanted his praises. So there you go. These are, these are the kings getting a thumping. These are probably the brothers getting the thumping. Well, the king comes. Krishna was 11 years, <clears throat> six months, six days old. 11 year old boy. <laughs> Of course, not an ordinary boy. So we've got different angles of uh, this tremendous act by the Lord. So the wives of Kams and his brothers, they were, of course, very aggrieved by the death of their well-wishing husband, husbands. They came forward with tearful eyes beating their heads to embrace their dead husbands and lamented loudly. Due to the terrible violence committed against innocent creatures, how can one who harms others attain happiness? They realized that Kams and his brothers were punished. So this is one of the reasons why we keep a, a vegetarian diet. 
if we are going to cause harm to defenseless creatures by eating their flesh, how much compassion are we going to get ourselves? If we can't give compassion, how much are we going to expect? In this life, we're very fortunate because we can live for others. If we live it just for ourselves, selfishly, what benefit is this body to us? It'll die anyway. So why not use it in the service of others and help others as much as we possibly, in whatever capacity we can. Krishna causes the appearance and disappearance of all beings in this world. He is their maintainer as well. One who disrespects him can never properly prosper happily. So then, um, after consoling the role ladies, so this was all um, Krishna's preaching to the, the wives, and he was consoling them in this way as well. Lord Krishna then, the sustainer of all worlds, arranged for the prescribed funeral rites to be performed. Then Krishna and Balaram released their mother and father from bondage and offered obeisances to them, touching their feet with their hands. Devaki and Vasudev, now knowing Krishna and Balaram to be the lords of the universe, simply stood with joined palms. Being apprehensive, they did not embrace their sons. <laughs> So they have this Ashwarya mood. They realize these two are not my children. These two are actually extraordinary personalities. And Krishna and Balaram didn't want that. They wanted the affection from the parents. So they started crying. <laughs> this is amazing. So this is a really nice uh, painting. This is um, Ugrasen, the father of Kamsa, was also imprisoned by Kamsa. And now Krishna freed him and made him the king, made him the ruler again. And this is Devaki, Vasudev, Krishna and Bharam. It's freeing them. So we'll see, maybe we'll see it tomorrow, but uh, what happens is um, um, yeah, Krishna and Balaram, they, they cry in front of, and they, they're saying to the parents that we, we are so sorry that we couldn't serve you all these years. We've really let you down. <laughs> Something like that. So we'll see that tomorrow. So, uh, Madhusudan Prabhu, would you like to do the uh, instructions? Jai Haripo. Hare Krishna. Yeah, wonderful. Mm. Um, this is the bit where obviously this chapter, the reason why Krishna came and um, challenged Kans, you know. So when he says, Paritranai sadhana vinasai cha duskritam dharma sam stapnam Sambuan, Yuge, Yuge. Kans, you know, deserve what he got. But obviously he had that. His uh, mood was fixed, but at least he was fortunate. Uh, you know, he still got um, to go liberated and got Krishna, you know, Krishna Lok. So in some way he was <laughs> delivered in that way. But chapter 44 then, so in this chapter, I found this verse 13. Uh, it's interesting to note the difference in the mood or the rasa expressed by the ladies in the audience between, um, uh, oh, it says Vrind, uh, Shisha Vrindavans, Avraj, and Mathura. So that, that, I think there's a mistake there. Mm. Uh, when I was typing, it come up as Vrind, I don't know why. But it meant Vraj. So mm. the bit, between Vraj and Mathura, it says, how pious are the tracks of land in Vraj? For the, there, the primeval personality of Godhead 
disguising himself with human traits, wanders about, enacting his different many pastimes, adorned with wonderful variegated forest gardens, he whose feet are worshipped by Lord Shiva and Goddess Ram Rama vibrates his flute as he tends the cows in the company of Balaram. So this is how in Vrindavan, that's what Krishna is acting like and, and doing his pastimes. But Srila Prabhupada further elaborates in the purport man, that um, they want to indicate, that means these uh, ladies in the audience and it's referring to them, that they want to indicate that in Vrindavan, Krishna simply enjoys with his girlfriends and boyfriends, whereas here in Mathura, the Lord is subjected to harassment by the bullying tactics of professional wrestlers. Thus, the ladies are condemning the city of Mathura because of their pain at seeing Krishna in what they consider an unfair wrestling match. Of course, Mathura is also one of the Lord's eternal abodes, but here the women in the assembly express their love in a critical mood. So it's interesting that, you know, you can have a kind of a critical mood as well, but you can't do it in Vrindavan, but you can do it in Mathura. So it has to be in the right time, place, wherever. But that critical mood um, is there in, in Mathura. Okay, Haribo, Hare Krishna. Jay, did it come across all right? Yeah, thank you. That was good. Appreciate that. Uh, absolutely brilliant point. Um, thank you. Uh, any questions, any comments by anybody? Anybody like to share anything? <clears throat> it's interesting now that, you know, the government is fighting for Kashi Vishwanath Temple and then... Mm. Uh, Ayodhya, and then now they're trying to go for Mathura mm. and making these pastimes without which, you know, hin Hindu or rather Bharat has never been really Bharat as such. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that transpires. But it's interesting to go to that Mathura. Mm. <laughs> when you go to that, it feels like a massive, big prison cell mm. kind of place, you know right next to a mosque and yeah. when I first went there I felt kind of weird but the birth the so-called birthplace I mean that's that's Mathura though mm. yeah <laughs> horrible hey, thank you it's very true yeah it's a little weird <laughs> all right we can stop there uh, thank you so much everybody we can continue tomorrow with chapter 45 Hare Krishna